Maine Public Broadcasting Network. The following program is a production of the Maine Public Broadcasting Network. Hi everybody, this is Lou McNally, and coming up next on Made in Maine Classics, we're going back to our very first season, 1989, 20 years ago. Back then we featured a number of people who were using the traditions of the past to make the products of today, and they're still around, successful too. John Libby, the timber framer, Tom Mosier, the cabinet maker, and Heritage Lanterns in Yarmouth. Won't you stay tuned as we look back over 20 years of Maine business on Made in Maine Classics. Funding for production of Made in Maine Classics has been provided by Martin's Surplus and Salvage since 1964, where the elite meet and the misers mingle, now in 12 locations across Maine and online at martins.com. And by the members of the Maine Public Broadcasting Network, whose generous support has helped tell the stories of Maine business for 20 years. Hi everybody, this is Lou McNally and welcome to Made in Maine Classics. You know, the old Beatles song says it was 20 years ago today and, well, we're not teaching Sergeant Pepper how to play in the band, but 20 years ago today we were introducing you in our very first season of Made in Maine to some companies who were using the traditions of the past to make products of today. And they're still around. 20 years ago we were in the same spot introducing you to John Libby, timber framer. He's still doing that today. These are timbers for a barn that's going to be erected in Cumberland just next month. Though he says it's more houses than barns these days, and he's also the largest distributor of timber framing tools in North America. And we also introduced you to Tom Mosier, furniture maker, who's doing very well, thank you, along with his sons now at his factory and shops up in Auburn. And Heritage Lantern was also featured back then in our first season, and they're still in the same place in Yarmouth turning out some beautiful handcrafted lighting products. So, won't you join along with us as we look back over 20 years of business in Made in Maine Classics. Timber framing has been around for centuries, since at least 200 BC, but uh, I don't imagine they use plans like this, do they, to frame they weren't quite that way back in, right. the, uh, back in the old days. John Libby is with us today. John, Hello. good to see you. you too. John Libby is uh, from Houses and Barns by John Libby here in Freeport. And uh, uh, we're in his shop here today, of course. It's nice to have on Great. a cold winter's day. Is this a house or a barn? And if it is, how can you do it inside a shop this large? <laughs> well, this is a boathouse, uh, and we can fit most any structure in here because, because of its length. Because it's made in, in little pieces. That's right. Well, it looks like. You know what I notice here, though, is that there's no... Uh, there's no nails. <laughs> nope, not in this process. Now, is this the same as post and beam, or is timber framing different? Timber framing is different because of the specialty in the joinery. And, and the joinery and is, is how it's fastened. Right. right. And post and beam is basically one timber next to another anyway. Oh, I see. So it can come together anyway. Right. But this has got to be, I can see, this looks like a, a dovetail joint he's working on. A little larger than you might find in a bureau drawer, though. That's right. Yeah, this is to receive a 6x8 floor joist, so it's a fairly good-sized dovetail. Wow, I should say so. Those are pretty good-sized pieces of wood. There's one thing I noticed uh, with this model here uh, is there's fewer sticks, and they're bigger than you'd find uh -huh. in a regular framed house. Does that, uh, that just go along with it? You can oh, use bigger spans? and It is larger spans, and it's typical uh, in timber frame construction because the timbers are taking more of the load, uh, and it's not necessary to have such close spans as is uh, usually found in conventional framing. It still amazes me if there's no nails or flanges or, That's right. or anything like that. What's holding it together? The uh, accuracy of the joinery, uh, what the joinery is doing, and gravity actually assists in holding it together. When it it's actually helps it. Right. My goodness. Well, now this is obviously part of the, the boathouse that you're building here. It's, uh, that's huge. It's a pretty good size <laughs> Those are big pieces there that you've got to <laughs> yeah. wheel together. But, it's now, an 8x8, eight eight and it's... That uh, would be similar to this part here, right? That's true. Sort of up, up, up in the roof there somewhere with where the rafters come together, but... Uh, and sitting just as it's sitting now, this would be the vertical king post, and this horizontal member as a horizontal would be the collar tie. Okay, and so all the rafters would come up uh, and, and join at the top. That's right. That's and just, it's just fascinating. It's amazing. I, I still can't get over the fact that there's no, you know, flanges there or anything like uh -huh. that. That's uh, right. But, and that's uh, the way it works. And so you put the whole thing together right here and then take it out to the site and yeah, all the, put all it together, the, uh, just let it to a settle right there on its foundation? And we put it precisely on the foundation. Well, good. All, uh, 
all the uh, joinery is cut here in the timbers, uh, and then we take it to the site and do just that. We assemble it and raise it on the site. That's terrific. It's like the old barn raising. Now, you started doing barns uh, back in 71. Mm -hmm. uh, about the same time, a lot of the rest of us were tearing down uh, houses right. and barns and <laughs> trying to get going, but you obviously have made it here. Uh, you didn't do it by yourself. Not at all. No, and we have... Uh, timber framers are... Well, you just go put it half the paper and find timber framers, right? Well, actually, you can get a few that way. Yeah, uh, but, uh, it takes a while to train them. The uh, crew that we have uh, has has come about by being by being a group of people who have uh, come to us because of what we do at the craft mm -hmm. and uh, and bring a lot with them with uh, enthusiasm for what they're doing and uh, and great skill in timber framing and quite often we start off with the carpentry skills and then and then uh, bring them on board with a uh, apprentice system or apprentice program where they oh, are being educated over time learn right along Right. Am I mistaken, or did it start off being just barns by John Le John Levy? Yeah. It was just barns that we did at first. Yeah. And then we went on to doing uh, other buildings uh, as the uh, settlers did. The barn went up first for them, and it happened to and do so houses, with us. Kind of followed the same track. You're That's building right. full-blown houses now, though, yes, aren't you? Yes, we are. Yeah. Most of our business is houses, uh, even though our love is barns. Yeah. That's great. What's your, what's your next project? Uh, let's go in the other room. Our president, Penny Merrill, is in there, and, and I think she can show us just what's going on there. Sounds good. We'll take a look. Ah, here we go. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lou. My All righty. And uh, Penny Merrill is here. Penny, yeah. the president of the company. That's right. And, uh, well, tell us about this new project. This is a big <laughs> one, it looks like. Uh, it is a large one. It's a particularly interesting one. The uh, clients needed to have us integrate their old house and L oh, into a new, original. this is the original yeah. back here, into uh, a new L and a barn in which they oh, wanted to put a swimming pool. A swimming pool. Yes. Isn't that something? And um, it's a very fascinating frame, we think, because these are three hammer beam trusses here, if you can see them. Yes. And you see that There's across, nothing underneath. nothing underneath to hold them. Yes, uh, and like the reason for that is because there's a swimming pool there, mm -hmm. and they wanted people to be able to dive without hitting their heads. That's marvelous. So it's a, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting now this, piece of uh, did you send out to have this done or something? It's no, a small company. No, yeah. we're a very small company, but this was done by our own architect, Frank Oliver, and we've... Spectacular. We are very fortunate to be able to uh, attract people like him. Many, I should say so, mm -hmm. with a, with a yes. company your size. Yes. Yeah. So we're really pleased with it. It's an exciting project, and we're kind of anxious to see it go up. It's a big project, too. It is a big project. How about your That's plans right. for the future, Penny? Uh, well, uh, expansion, growth, yes, yeah. uh -huh. uh, a little bit slower than in the past three years. Oh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a novel way of putting it. That's great. Well, good luck in the future. Well, I know you're you busy, so I'll let you get back to work. In the meantime, for our viewers here, we have got uh, a barn lantern here, and of course, uh, no old New England farmer would uh, think of going out in the evening to inspect his barn or stock without carrying one along. This is only one of many that is made just around the corner here in Yarmouth at Heritage Lanterns. Producer France Shea shows us more. 